Call the dispatch rider. I have a message for Richmond. Yes, sir. Jefferson Davis, President, Confederate States of America. Sir, the attack on Washington has failed at Antietam Creek. Early reports from my field commanders place our dead and wounded at over 10,000. More than a quarter of my army. I expect this number to rise significantly during the night. There is no hope of our mounting a further attack. Our artillery and cavalry are being cut to pieces. My best intelligence also reports 60,000 Union troops awaiting General McClellan's pleasure in the morning. One assault at strength and we will be annihilated. I have bivouacked at Sharpsburg and await the inevitable. I will not countenance surrender. I assure you, my sword will be broken in two before it will be surrendered. God be with you and with the Confederacy. Stay here. McClellan's truce will be across Antietam Creek soon as it's light. I lost most of my men today. If we march tonight, I'll lose the rest. We will be trapped here, sir. Finished. General. Hold it, young man. We have got to leave the wounded. Take the men who can still walk back across the Potomac. Can you tell them Robert E. Lee don't run for nobody, sir. Especially no Yankees. Leeds. They intend your men, General Lee. You'll be safe. Who the hell are you? It's all right, Colonel. I got you the lines. Clone's men are as chewed up as yours. They'll stay put in the morning. That's madness. He's got us right where he wants us. He's a cautious man. <laughs> People work your men, Colonel. What? You heard me. That's an order. You are wrong about this, Mr. Rook. General Lee, have I ever been wrong before? Be feeling lucky, Jack. Weren't for this, that bullet might have gone clean through you. Still hurts pretty bad, though. Just rest easy. 
Pa, get him some water. Yeah. I love you, Abby. I didn't want you nursing. I'm sure glad you're here. Don't talk. Well, you'll be all right as soon as the doctor comes. Doctor's here. I need bandages, cotton pads. I'll be right back. <gasps> Well, looks like I've saved the best to the last. Hey, what are you doing? I've got plans for it, son. Just like I got them for you. Now relax. And stay calm. <laughs> Edward, Atticus Rook. I've just received another shipment of Confederate antiques. Mint condition. I've got one piece alone that should bring in 15,000. I've traveled thousands of miles just for one piece like this. Did you see Rook anywhere yet? I think he moved. We've been trying to find him for three months. He's never around. Oh, he'll be here. Pickers such as he and I seldom rise to this level. Let's just hope he's still got the piece we're looking for. I guess, but pickers aren't collectors, Mickey, they're suppliers. Rook wouldn't hold onto that magic lantern any longer than he had to. Let's just hope he remembers who he sold it to. Yeah. It's Lee at Sharpsburg. Where'd you get it? Some dealer brought it in. What's its number in the sale? I decided not to part with it. I had the finest collection of Civil War memorabilia until you came along, Atticus. Beautiful piece. It's nothing compared to what you found. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you cleared a hundred thousand in this collection. Not bad for a night's work. Isn't that, isn't that work over there? Ah, uh, yes, finally. I wonder who the girl is. I'll get a closer look. Jack, mm. do you think he knows what that lantern's capable of? I doubt it. Why did Lewis list it as the Eye of Death? I mean, does it kill people and let us watch them die, or what? Well, whatever it does, let's hope that Brooke can help us get it into the vault. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Eastern Galleries and this auction of fine antebellum and Civil War collectibles. First on the block, a silver flask. Please note the bullet hole and engraved name. Zachary Bodine, 10th Virginia Regulars. I have a reserve of 5,000. Do I hear six? I always hate Five. this. I'm always afraid I'm going to scratch my nose or something Here and end I up in debt. Seven. Eight. You here to buy something? Nine. No. Mr. Rook invited me. I don't know much about this kind of Nine. stuff. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Spend an awful lot of time traveling around finding this stuff. Twelve. Thirteen. I don't think so. He comes to the dining room where I work every morning for breakfast. 
Fifteen. Fifteen. Once, twice, three times. Congratulations. Quite a haul. Better than my wildest dreams. Edward, what would something of real historical significance be worth to you? Like what? Robert E. Lee's sword. <laughs> Lee's sword is in the Museum of the Confederacy. Not that sword. The sword he broke at Sharpsburg so he couldn't surrender it. Now, what would that be worth? Conservatively, somewhere in the neighborhood of half a million. Pretty nice neighborhood. I'll call you later. Atticus. Jack. Jack Marshak. It's been a long time. I didn't know you were still picking antiques. And you've done very well for someone so young. You want to get rich, Jack. Take a tip from the medical world. Specialize. Well, I suppose that I have done that in my own way. I took over Louis Vanderdee's store after he died. You ever buy anything from him? From Louis? No, never. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. Well, that's funny. I could have sworn that he said something about your being a customer. Listen, I gotta run. Keep in touch, will you? He says he never bought it. What? Mm. He's lying. He must be. Lewis would never have listed him in the manifesto. Yes, I know. Hadn't. There's something else. His girlfriend says he's been in town for weeks. Well, we've been calling him every day. He's never in. There he goes. Thanks, girl. Want me to follow him? Yes. I think we'd better find out some more information about that land and run fast. Let's get back to this talk. Come on. Hey, watch it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should have told you. I live in a very dangerous neighborhood, and you don't want to be out here at night on your own, no? What was that? I don't know. But I think they're coming to get you. <laughs> give you a history lesson on the Civil War. Well, we're gonna look at slides? Okay. Hmm? <laughs> I've got something very special to show you. Something you've never seen before. <laughs> this is a magic lantern. Only this one is real. The lamp burns for three hours. And in that time, it can let us travel anywhere we want. Sharpsburg. September 17th, 1862. Robert E. Lee's Confederate troops were cut to pieces at the Battle of Antietam and retreated here. 22,000 men died, more than any other day of the war. A treasure trove of collectibles left in the field. Antiques worth a fortune. Just waiting. Waiting for a picker to come and get them. A man who put those aside then could have made his descendants wealthy beyond compare. Let's visit the dead, Lydia. Let's see what they're up to. I'd like to go home Let's right go. now. No, I want to go home. I can't do it without you. <laughs>
You poor bastard. Now you're stuck here forever. <laughs> Where the hell's Ryan? He should have been back long ago. Yeah, maybe his new watch gave out on him. <laughs> Do you think something could have happened to him at Brooks' apartment? I think we should go see. I'm not getting anywhere here. All I'm finding out about magic lanterns is historical references. Do they have anything to do with the Civil War? Yes. They say that the name Eye of Death came from there. Photographers did slideshows of the battlefield carnage. No one had ever before seen real life frozen in time. Jack, what if that lantern did more than show the battlefield? What have you got in mind? Well, I'm looking through this auction program, and Rook didn't specialize in the whole Civil War. Everything he finds comes from the same year, 1862, and the same battlefield, Sharpsburg. What? What if somehow he's getting the artifacts from those slides? Or if the slides were taking him to them? Come on, Mickey. Easy. Easy. Yeah, you're all right. Who are you? I think you should tell us who you are first. Ryan. Ryan Dalian. Where are you from? Chicago. Well, you, we found ourselves a Yankee. Ah, wait. Look at him. He's no soldier. Spy? He ain't no spy dressed that way, neither. What the hell's that? It's a watch. What are you wearing it on your wrist for? What are you doing so far from home? Yeah. What are you doing here, son? I came after Rook. A fellow named Atticus Rook. He killed a woman. You one of them bounty hunters? Yeah. That's what I am. You better do something about them clothes you want to run around these parts. What happened on the road? He must have hit me over the head. Knocked me out. You didn't see him? Well, we were looking for someone else when we found you. Huh. Wait a minute, Abby. If this fellow's a tracker, he could find the man we're after. Who's that? The man we found. Robin the dead. He killed my husband. Yeah. Or for an old canteen, weren't worth spit. Rook. Thin, wiry man. Long, dark hair. Yeah, yeah, that could be him. General Robert E. Lee, is he anywhere nearby? Yeah, he's camped by the church, what? Gotta see him. Could the General's got more important matters to, to worry about? It's the one place I know Rook might go. I'll go down there and watch. Abigail, better get him some clothes. Hey. Come on, boys, move it up. What is this place? Sharpsburg. You'll read about it in the history book someday. Yeah, I hope so. <coughs> Say, thanks for finding me this stuff. Where'd you get it? It used to be Zach's. Zach? My husband. Zachary Bodine. 
10th Virginia regulars. You knew him? No, not exactly. Well, at least you'll be able to track his killer without some sentry putting a bullet through you. Where's your gun? Uh, Brooke must have taken it. This was Axe, too. Which would fit if it killed the man who killed him. Excuse me, folks. Police. Are you residents of this building? Uh, yes. Is there a problem? We just found a young woman's body around the corner here. Have you been out all evening? Yes. Yes, we have. Well, I'll have to take your names anyway. We'll be around later to ask a few questions. Yes, of course. Uh, Atticus Rook. Uh, we're on the fourth. This is my daughter, Mickey. Yes, all right, Mr. Rook. Uh, just one moment, please. Do you recognize this woman? Atticus, Atticus Rook. Open up, it's Jack Marsha. Lying, Jack. He's had it all along. Don't touch it, Mickey. Don't touch it. Whatever he's using this for, it's already in operation. Do you think that woman outside was? It certainly looks like it, doesn't it? Well, Jack, do you recognize anything about this slide? I'm not sure. That's Robert E. Lee. That sets it around the 1860s. 1862. Yes. There's no one here. Fresh blood. Where the hell is Rook? And why is this thing burning? I don't know. Unless... Jack. I'll be careful. This is a reference book on the Civil War, right? Number of pages missing, all 1862. If he was traveling back, he would have to know everything he could about that period. I don't think there's any doubt that he's using this lantern to get back into the past. I only wish I knew whether Ryan was with him or not. How do we find that out? I don't know. We haven't got very much time. These lanterns only burn for about three hours. Ryan's been away from us at least that long. Well, what are we going to do, just wait? I found out all we're going to here. I think we gotta get back. And, and hey, before the police come around, too, you know, this is a back door. No, 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 Mickey, leave that. If Ryan has entered the past, that's his only way out, too. Come on. Look, I've been 
important intelligence report for General Lee. You can tell me. I'll give him the message after you're dead. Now, come on, over here. Look. These could save every man in this town. At least look at them before you shoot me. Isn't every photograph in that book was taken at Sharpsburg? And he tore the information on Sharpsburg out of his reference book, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to find it in here. Mickey, if he's using the lantern to get back into the past, then he'll be in any records there are. But how can you be so sure he's doing that? Because it makes sense. It explains how Rook finds mint condition artifacts, all from the same time and place. It might also explain why we can't find Ryan. Jack, do you think he has to kill to go forward in time as well as back? I'm afraid so. You don't buy a curse like that cheaply. Jack? Hmm? Oh, my God. Jack, look! It's Ryan! General Robert E. Lee. And an unidentified colonel flank a Union spy prior to his execution. We know that Ryan can't have died in the past. He was alive tonight. No. We know he was alive tonight. But this might be his last night in the past and in the present. have to at least consider retreat. Mr. Rook assures me we'll come to no harm by resting the men. Is he going to tell you how to save the army and get us out of here? He promised me he'd come back with a map of the Union positions. If it's wrong, then we'll rely on our wits like we've always done. And I'll make sure that this sword doesn't end up in Yankee hands. Yes. Mr. Rook, Detective Howard. Um, wh um, what do you want? I need a statement, Mr. Rook. About the body outside. Mr. Rook, Atticus Rook. Yes. What can I do for you? We're just taking statements, routine. Uh, do you live here alone? Yes. I am. Uh, I've been out all evening. Yes, I know. I went through the building earlier. I didn't see you come in, either. Well, I'm sure you've had your hands full. Could I see some identification, Mr. Rook? Just for the record. Of course.
Who did this? Young fellow in Virginia Gray. His head was bandaged. No. I'm sorry, ma'am. We'll find him. He's got nowhere to run. Edward, Atticus. Yes, I know what time it is. This can't wait. Listen. You remember that possibility we talked of? Lee's sword. How soon can you have the money? to go. Abigail. Brooke killed your father. The army says it was you. I thought this war had taken all it could from me. I guess I was wrong. I've got no reason to hurt your father. You're a Yankee. You're on the other side. I'm not on anybody's side. Believe me. This war has got brother fighting brother. Everybody's taking sides. Not me. Let me explain. Remember this? Have you ever seen one of these before? No, because they haven't been invented yet. Well, in my time, they have. Look, no. I'm from another place, Abigail. I'm from your future. Look, you wondered why I was so far from home? That's my home. I've got no reason to take sides. I'm about as far from home as you can get. Well, what do you think? I think Rook's our only hope. We haven't got a chance of getting Ryan back unless we get that lantern. Jack, look. Hey. Where do you think he's going? I don't know. Wherever it is, we'd better be with him. Come on. I don't believe this. If I were you, I'm not sure I would either. But it's true. The South's gonna lose the war. Then Zack and Pa died for nothing. No, no, no. They died for something they believed in. They made the country stronger than it had been before. In my time, nobody thinks badly of them. Is this your girl? No, she's just a friend. Abigail, my only chance of getting back is finding Rook. But you said he went to your time. He'll be back. He's after something here, something special. A sword that belongs to General Robert E. Lee. Now, if he steals that sword, he'll go back to my time, and I'll be stuck here forever. I, I don't understand. You said Rook spies for the general. Well, he just gives him information any school kid knows. He's making Lee trust him? Yes. And to find Rook, I have to be close to General Lee. How? You can't just go see him. I can't if you take me. You could turn me in as a Yankee spy. I don't understand why this is so urgent, Atticus. I can't get a half a million dollars in the middle of the night. I don't need cash. You've got twice that much in artifacts. Of course. But why do you need it now? Because I'm leaving town. Oh, well, I could mail it to you. Where's the sword? What is this? First piece I want. The slide of Lee you showed me. Well, what do you need with that? Get it! Now! Here. It's a rare photograph. Probably one of the first. But it's only worth 20 or 30 thousand. It's worth a lot more than that. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, now 
Well, just be a minute, General. I have more important things to do, Mr. McLeod. Now, now, please, sir, don't move. Thank you. Now, would the gentleman on the outside move it a little closer to the General, please? Thank you. And... What the hell are you? Uh, uh, please, sir. Just one more photograph. You think this will work? Rook has to come back. I'm pretty sure that slide only gets him to this place in time. How are you going to get close to Lee? The spies are shot. I think I can remember enough history for him to keep questioning me. Hold. Oh, hold it, ma'am. I caught me a Yankee spy. I think the general ought to talk to him. Come here, ma'am. What makes you think he's a spy? Just listen to him. He's a northerner. I caught him by the bridge, robbing the dead. Bring him inside. If you can't tell me where McClellan's moving, you're not much use to me, son. I'll tell you about other things, about Gettysburg. Gettysburg's 100 miles from here. I need to know what's going on across the river. Now, where's McClellan going to attack? I can't remember. Gettysburg, of all the... Yo! Tell you about Atlanta burning. Atlanta's not burning. I've listened to your wild stories for over an hour. Just what are you trying to do here, son? General Lee. Mr. Rook, you're just in time. We captured a Yankee spy. Unfortunately, he's been not much help. You don't need him, General. I found your way out of here. Don't listen to him, General. You don't need him. You can find your own way out of here. I think you'll find everything you need right here. He's a thief and a killer. He's the one who's been robbing your Get dad. him out of here. Look, look, he's, you can't trust him. He's just trying to steal your sword. The Confederacy can never repay you for this, sir. Uh... No, but you can. That young man's just given me an idea. Must be a Yankee spy or a deserter. down. You didn't understand what's going on. You're a killer. That's all I need to understand. You put that away. Abigail! I'll take you places you've never imagined. You killed my husband. He was already dead. Oh 
Abigail. It's all right, Ryan. I'll see Zach again. It's all right. I can't believe it. Why not? You were there. <laughs> you really ought to keep that for your grandchildren, you know. You are the oldest living veteran of the Civil War. You suppose Lee remembers us? No, I mean, do you think anything Rook or I did actually changed anything that happened? We really don't know very much about time, Ryan. Some people think the past and the future are intertwined. Yeah, but what about those people that Rook killed? I mean, what would have happened to them if he hadn't been there? Maybe the past happened exactly the way it happened tonight. Maybe Rook's map changed the course of the war. I don't know. Well, Jack, what are we going to do about this? Sell it. Should be worth a couple of bucks. A couple of bucks? It's worth a fortune. Everyone knows that Lee broke his sword at the Battle of Sharpsburg, Mickey. So this is obviously a fake. 